how does this work? How can you take what you learned here today into actionable, tactical steps so that you can have, get more reach, more revenue, so that you can have your sanity back, so that you can scale through processes, through teams, um, through systems, okay? So to think about when it comes to creating content, so back to number one again, right? Creating that social asset. Um, we want to start thinking about different audiences. So how does it work? There are many different phases to this, okay? So let's talk about cold audiences. Now, cold audiences are people who don't know who you are, they don't know you exist, they're not problem aware, they're not solution aware, um, they have never met you before. So what is the purpose of creating content for cold audiences on Facebook? The whole purpose of this, the whole objective of putting content out there on Facebook, it is so that you can retarget, everyone say retarget. retarget. Thank you, retarget them and the people that has watched specific, um, either 25%, 50%, or 75% um, of your videos, right? So now, when you start putting content out there, what's gonna happen, okay? What's gonna happen is, First of all, what do you think is gonna happen? When you post or you make a post on your Facebook page, not your profile, but your page, what do you think is the most likely thing that will happen? Nothing. Okay, write that down. Write down, nothing happens. Okay, because I don't want you going back and you start shooting your videos and then nothing happens and then you say, oh, I tried doing what Ping Jun told me, but it didn't work, nothing happened. And then you're gonna look at your notes and you're gonna say, oh, this is according to plan. Okay, nothing happens. So. The reason why nothing happens is because this is a pay-to-play game, right? Uh, Facebook organic is an all-time low and it will keep constantly declining. Facebook wants you to pay to reach your own audience. So having likes and followings on Facebook page really doesn't give you much of an edge, right? Um, so the way to do it is when you start posting these videos on Facebook, you'll need to boost it and run an make it into an ad based on video views, okay? So now, because it's a pay-to-play game, you put your video up on Facebook, nobody watches it, you start paying money to people whom you think would be interested in that video. So what this means is, um, let's say I am a speaker trainer and I wanna teach people public speaking. So let's say now I, I create a video, I shoot a video, and I post this up on Facebook, nobody watches it, I get two likes, my mom and my dad, and what do I do now? I will go on Facebook and I will run an ad based on views or boost it to people whom I think might be interested in this topic. So I'm now boosting it to people that might like public speaking. I'm boosting it to speaker trainers, maybe Les Brown motivators. I'm boosting it to people who might like Toastmasters, okay? So now, people whom I think might be interested in this topic start seeing it. And then after Facebook tells me, let's say by spending, I don't know, 100 bucks, I get 10,000 views, for example. I can now retarget the people that has watched at least 25% of my, or 50% of video with ads that says, hey, I noticed you watched my video on five tips on how to overcome the fear of speaking. Is overcoming the fear of speaking something you want to do? If so, I have a webinar that shows you three moves that you need to be making if you want to turn your voice and your message into a career, right? Or if so, I have a free download that will show you seven common mistakes that people normally make when it comes to speaking so that you don't have to make these mistakes, right? Click on this link to download this cheat sheet. Right? So now I'm sending people into my funnel based on people that have consumed my content in the past. Okay? So this is phase one. Now one of the things that I love doing with cold audiences is I love creating dream 100 ads. Everyone say dream 100 ads. <laughs> right? So dream 100, when it comes to dream 100, you will see that um, all these different ads here, um, I am always thinking about who are the people that's in my market, the authors, the celebrities, the public figures, 
the organizations, the softwares where people, if they follow that page, they might be interested in what it is that I have to offer as well. Okay? Now this requires work, but if you are willing to put in this work, it will be a social asset that will live on forever. Okay? Now, how, what does this mean? So right now in your market, I want you to start thinking about specific thought leaders or organizations or authors or public figures or software companies or people who have a following and think about how can you craft a super laser focused message for that particular audience. Okay, so Russell talks about the Dream 100 a lot, right? How many of you have heard of Dream 100? Right? So thank you. So, so if you were to take that same concept of Dream 100 in the context of social media, what if you could create ads that is so laser focused to that specific organization, page, software, author, public figure, celebrity? Okay? So one of the things that I do is I have all these different ads that targets my dream 100, but not just people, but also software and companies and organizations. So here's what most average marketers do. So average marketers will always target based on interest. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. So for example, if again, if I have this public speaking course, the average way to do it, which is what most people will do, is I'll run an ad targeting people who, have, who are interested in public speaking. The Dream 100 method is targeting, creating an ad that targets people who like Toastmasters. And my ad would be specific to the people who follow Toastmasters only. So my ad would be, after spending seven years training with Toastmasters, these were my five biggest takeaways learning from Toastmasters. Right? So now I'm creating a piece of content that I know is shown only to the people who like Toastmasters. You could do this for click funnels, for lead pages, for whatever software that you might be targeting that could be a competitor. You could be, if you're in fitness, you could be targeting P90X. You could be targeting Tony Horton. And rather than targeting the interest, you are targeting that book, that author, that person. And that ad is only shown if people follow that person. So these examples over here, this first one is an ad that you will see if and only if you follow Gary Vee. If you don't follow Gary Vee, you'll never see this ad. This second ad here is an ad that you will see if and only if you like and follow Shark Tank. If you don't like and follow Shark Tank, you'll never see this ad. This third ad over here <coughs> is an ad that you will see if and only if you follow Brendan Bouchard. If you don't follow Brendan Bouchard, you'll never see this ad, right? So I have hundreds of these videos that is targeting only a specific person, software, celebrity, author, which is something you need to be doing, okay? And I can tell you, if all you did from this event is this one thing, this will drastically and dramatically reduce your ad cost. Why? It is because now you're targeting a very specific person with a super laser focused message, right? So how many of you like this, right? Okay, thank you. So it's not about understanding this, it's about just doing it. I can guarantee you, if all you did was just one ad, that follow this Dream 100 thing is not just gonna save you a ton of money, reduce your ad cost, but get you a ton of super laser focused targeted leads. So I'm not gonna show you the entire thing over here, but this is a very specific Gary V ad um, that targets Gary V audiences only, okay? Um, how many of you here have seen this ad before? How many of you here have not seen this ad before? Okay, thank you. Let me just show you like 30 seconds of it so you can understand like 
the strategy behind it. Okay, here's how, how you're it obnoxiously young. The number one advantage you have at this table is your age. Not that young, but fair enough. Okay. You're younger than me. Gary V gets it. So I was just looking and reading through the books again. And I want to share with you how Gary's books has changed my life in terms of how it got me more reach, more revenue, more impact, more income. Um, but the thing that really made a difference is the jab, 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 right hook. How to tell your story in a noisy social media world. Um, one thing that for, we were just, in fact, I was just having dinner with Gary the other day and I was telling him the journey of how when I first started out and when I first met Gary, it was uh, 11 years ago, 10 years ago, it was at a, in New York in a ClickBank exchange event and he was doing his book signing for his first book ever, Crush It. And back then, I was this uh, shy, introverted kid. I mean, I still am, but back then, I was hiding behind a pen. Let me just pause this one second, okay, because this whole video is like, you know, 10 minutes long and we don't need to watch the entire thing. But if you look at this ad, there are really just three main parts to this ad, okay? Number one is the hook where I have I make that immediate connection to build the rapport with that audience. So I mention his name and this thing could be, if you take a look at the backdrop, okay? Um, I have a lot of books, but I'm actually... A, a really slow reader. I've actually only completed less than five books my entire life because I'm a horrible reader. I read really slow and my best way to learn stuff is from live events and through coaching and that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I utilize these books is as a hook to run my Dream 100 ads, okay? So one of the things that I would do is I'll take that book up as a prop. I literally use it as a prop. I would just skim through or go to this site that's called Three Minute Reads and read up the entire thing in like three minutes. And I would talk about how that book, my, either my biggest takeaways or how this author has helped me, um, if it's true, and then just talk about this person or organization or software right in the first 10 seconds, okay? Because now people would understand and get the connection immediately. So that's step number one. Step number two is to create a bridge Everyone say bridge. bridge. Okay, so once you establish the hook and build the rapport, step number two is to build the bridge to your offer, right? What it is that you are doing. So whether it's that free plus shipping funnel, whether it's a webinar funnel, whether it's a high ticket funnel, whether it's an application funnel, you want to build the bridge to what inspired you to do the thing that you are doing, okay? And then step number three is the call to action, okay? So... If you have seen my ads, you'll notice that I've got an ad that targets people who have read Expert Secrets. I have an ad that targets people who follow Tony Robbins. I have an ad that targets people who like Robert Kiyosaki. I have an ad that, that targets people like ClickFunnels. There's an ad that's super laser focused to all these different things. And if you did this, rather than just doing what most average marketers do, which is just targeting based on general broad interest, this will significantly reduce your ad cost, okay? So that's step number one, um, phase number one, rather. One of the things that you can do to create content targeting cold audiences. Number two is warm audiences. How do you create social assets that live on forever targeting warm audiences? Warm audiences are now people who have perhaps watched your videos or visited your landing pages. They know you exist. Maybe they've opted in. They know who you are. Okay, and so that you can convert them into a hot audience. Okay, what is a hot audience? A hot audience is somebody that's perhaps bought something from you. They've given you their name and email. They attended the webinar. They're hot. Okay, so how you create content to speak to these different audiences is different. It's not videos that is one size fits all. Okay, now. What does this mean? How do you think about content creation and creating social assets for these different categories? Um, here's what I mean. So for example, hot audiences. If somebody has bought stuff from you before, then ultimately what you wanna do is to ascend them to the next thing in your value ladder. If a person who has registered for your webinar but did not attend, 
there should be a video or an ad that gets them to attend the webinar that they missed. Okay, so how does this work? So, in for hot audiences, um, let me give you a couple of examples. Okay, so an example here would be the use of sizzle reel videos. Now, I am sure you've seen before in the past testimonial video ads, sizzle reel videos, very very common. Um, that marketers put up sizzle reel videos on their Facebook page, and then they wonder why it doesn't convert. Okay? And the reason why it doesn't convert is because a sizzle reel video or a testimonial-based video is not meant for cold audiences. It's not meant for the broad public. Now, to give you an example, um, I want to share with you an ad and a video of how I sell a $15,000 a high-ticket event. How many of you would like to see a case study of a $15,000 offer? Okay. okay, thank you. So let me just quickly play you this video and then I'll deconstruct what I'm doing in order to sell this $15,000 offer. So here you are, flying in from a few different countries to spend a few days with me and my team at the office and in a world-class studio and have me coach you to have your marketing assets done, implemented, and rolled out. And what if I told you that it wouldn't just be me coaching you and supporting you, but also my team being right here with me, building your funnels, creating your videos, editing your images, crafting your backdrop, where you will have everything handed to you before you left this event. We begin by first crafting you a world-class presentation. This will be utilizing the same format I've personally used online on sales videos, webinars, and offline on the world's largest platforms. I'll be creating with you the entire slide deck, script, and presentation. In fact, I'll be giving you the entire template so that the only thing you need to do is to edit the words together with me, slide by slide, move by move, to fit your industry, niche, and target audience. Once your pitch is done, we will move on to create the marketing pages, the webinar registration page, the thank you page, the live page, the replay page, all the way to the checkout page. My team will be here with me in this very room with you to coach you and help you get these pages set up. You'll have these pages up and running, customized with your graphics, live, all the way from the registration page, the thank you page, to the checkout page. Before implementation week, I didn't have clarity in terms of exactly how I can market my company, my training programs. I asked a lot of questions and he's just been so patient and he has helped me to now have that clarity and what are all the different ways and different tools that I can use to attract prospects into my training program and how I can actually conduct write ads and also conduct a webinar. What I've learned is actually a system how to create a content, how to be able to send a message with a more targeted message and Peng Jun is basically a practitioner. He's not teaching us theory, but rather get us practice to do our video shooting and make sure that we walk out here, we are so ready. Not only do you get Peng Jun's personal attention here, he goes around and gives you actual feedback on your specific niche, on your specific webinar, on your specific angles and hooks. You get to actually use everything that Peng Jun uses and you get access to his team for the whole entire time. Once the funnel is done, we want to promote it. We need to have the marketing assets. I got my team to create your own customized backdrop that you'll be able to deploy to present in front of my CNN style TVs to give you that celebrity branding and positioning. We will create the Facebook ads, the Instagram swipe ups, the retargeting ads, the emails, the follow up sequence, the tech integration. This is not another course that teaches you a bunch of stuff, leaving you with the feeling of overwhelm. This is not theory. You will be doing it on the spot. It doesn't matter if you've never done this before, if you fumble, or if you downright suck. That's part of the process. 
And what I've done is I've recorded, I've, I've tried. And, oh no, <laughs> sorry. More happiness, more, can we do this again? <laughs> okay, again. It's a great opportunity to, sorry. Doesn't matter if you don't know what to say just yet. Doesn't matter if you are uncomfortable on camera. I'll craft the script together with you. I'll coach you through the process. I'll get you in the right state. Why most people fail at investing in property and what are the top 1% of all investors doing differently? Or you are trying to make your love relationship work and then you're still feeling heartbroken or your relationship is feeling mundane. Does this scene sound familiar to you? That's a traditional and unconventional way of doing multi-level marketing or network marketing. I noticed you registered for the event but you did not show up. What happened? Or well, you had an event that day. Are you really frustrated in not getting the results you want? Once we're done with the videos, you will then utilize the other sets in the studio. The infinity wall, the green screens, the flip charts, the light board to create other marketing assets for your social media, for your sales process in your marketing, saving you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, engaging professional photographers or videographers, or renting a studio. Assuming if you can even find one like this one. The fact that I hate cameras, I don't like being on videos, this is something really uncomfortable for me from the very first day, but day after day, Peng Jun and team encouraged me. I got put, put myself on the spot even better. Implementation week will really help you get there and implement what you need to get there. He and his team had put all the work together to help us uh, to complete our webinar funnel. I found out that I can improve a lot in a short term uh, with his help and with his team. So, um, so I believe that I can make it happen. And with the guidance from Peng Jun directly, I think it's worth more than just whatever that you, you, you are going to pay and the value you will get and team support especially thanks mobile for all your hard work and support and i think that is really something priceless basically peng jun just got a studio where to shoot green screen photos white background and even here this massive backdrop right here where else do you see a company do that right only in this company and peng jun completely over delivered and brought out the best in everyone so to those thinking about it, just take massive action and I guarantee you results are about to be made. The next few days will be a game changer. You'll literally walk out of this event with your sales process, your marketing, your ads, your email sequence, the things that you've always wanted to implement but never got around to doing it. Set your expectations high because we will massively exceed them. All right, there's a reason why I played this entire video because I wanted you to feel how a person would feel if they watch this ad on Facebook. Okay, now I want you to imagine this. This ad over here is one of our most profitable ads in terms of return on ad spend. So it's for this $15,000 offer and for every $1 we're spending on this ad campaign, we are making about 70 times return on ad spend. Okay, and the reason for that is because it's high ticket, but the main reason is because we are only running it to people that have paid us high ticket before. So it's super laser focused, and it's only running to people who have spent at least a thousand dollars with us. Okay, now. This is what I mean by hot audiences. Now imagine this, there are many marketers out there who take a video like this, which is a nicely made sizzle reel, and they put it on your Facebook page, or they run this as an ad for that 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, $15,000 product or event, or consulting or done for you service, and they wonder why it doesn't convert. And the reason why it does not convert is because if it's a testimonial sizzle reel video, if it's something that talks about what you do and the result you generate,
people will not care if they have not gotten value from you in the past. But yet, that is how most people run ads. They take a video that's nicely done like this and they run it to people who don't know who they are. So let me ask you this question. Imagine this. Imagine if you had no idea who I am, you don't know who Ping Jun is, you've never heard of any of my products, you've never bought any of my thing. Do you think you would have watched through this entire, I don't know, three, four, five minute video? What do you think? No, no right? That's how most people think about their ads, right? That's how mo people think that just by putting a really nice polished video and running as an ad to call audience is gonna convert. It's not. It's going to convert if and only if you're running it to a hot audience. So this is where you're mapping out your value ladder comes in. This is where you're gonna think about running ads to people who have bought from you or in that funnel to the next thing in that journey in your value ladder, right? So this ad over here is only shown to people that have paid at least $1,000 with us to invite them if they wanna fly over to my office that is based in Malaysia, right? High ticket $15,000 offer. Okay, so in terms of understanding context of platforms, okay? Um, when it comes to content creation, you wanna understand why are people on that platform? So you've heard me say this, it is not one size fits all. Most, many marketers, they take the same video and they put it across all these different platforms without understanding context, which was a mistake that I made a long time ago, okay? So for example, this is a video called how I met my first love online. Um, and this, how I met my first love online, that's the hook, that's the pattern interrupt. So if you think about this, on Facebook, why are people watching content on Facebook and what makes them stop? So chances are a person is sitting down in their toilet seat doing this, <laughs> right? What makes them stop is that pattern interrupt, it's the hook. It is your choice of thumbnail. It is the borders, right? What, gives, what makes them give you that initial three seconds of attention? So that is how to think about content creation on Facebook, right? What's the pattern interrupt that stops people in their tracks so that they give you that initial first three seconds of attention? Now, YouTube, on the other hand, is different. You, YouTube, remember, YouTube is a search engine. People are, how would YouTube videos get discovered? Two main ways. Either it is, appears as a suggested video on YouTube or if a person does a search on Google, on the search engines, they see a YouTube video in the search results, right? These are two main ways. So in other words, the only, the main way your video would get discovered is if it is optimized. Everyone say optimized that you optimized to be discovered for the search engines based on keywords that people are searching for. Remember, this is something we talked about earlier, okay? So imagine if I took this same video called How I Met My First Love Online, which is basically a hook. What is this? It's basically how I made my first $7 online that made me fall in love with the online business and how, you know, um, I, and that, that's what got me started, right? Now, imagine if I took this same video and if I posted it on YouTube with the same title called How I Met My First Love Online, right? Now, how would this video ever get discovered? Right? It would be like, if somebody's typing in how to meet my first love online, I don't know, they're probably looking for something else, okay? Uh, maybe Tinder or Grindr, right? Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a totally different thing, okay? So we need to understand why are people on that platform and we need to repurpose. Everyone say repurpose. repurpose. Thank you. We wanna repurpose the same content to match the context of the platform. So this YouTube video, we can post the same video, but it has to be optimized for search. So this same video could be 
how I made my first sale in the online world. Okay, so this could be based on the keyword how to make my first sale, right? Which would have some searchability so that my video here can get discovered. Okay, so a good way is to ride on. If you are new, okay, and you have no following right now, how many of you here you're new to the content game? Show of hands if you're new. Okay, thank you. So if you're new, a great way is to ride on keywords that is being searched, and this could be based on somebody else's name or product or book. So remember we talked about the Dream 100 ads? One of the things that you could be doing is to create a YouTube video, and let's say, you're, you're, let's say you are in productivity, okay? Um, your video could be how Tony Robbins' priming process helped me with my productivity. Now, guess what? There is search value in that. People are searching for Tony Robbins. The hardcore Tony Robbins fans would understand what the priming method is, right? Therefore, there's a chance of your video getting discovered because you created it based on keywords that people could be potentially searching for. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Okay, thank you. So, um, understanding context of platforms, okay? So the way we handle all of that, okay? Uh, we use Trello. You could be using Asana on Monday. But one of the things that we do is we create checklists and processes for literally every single thing that happens in our social media, in our funnels, in YouTube. Um, and again, this is where the structural asset comes in, right? Um, your role as the entrepreneur is to build up these processes. And the way to think about this is to understand that everybody in your team wants to win, okay? So, so for example, uh, repurposing an email, there are seven steps to it. How to upload and optimize a YouTube video, there are 13 steps to it, okay? Now, why are these different checklists so important? Here's why. It is because if you do not create a process for your social media, it means that you are expecting your team member to operate every single day based on memorization, right? Most business owners, owners here's how to operate. They say, they give an instruction, which is usually, please make sure that it's done, okay? How many of you have said, Please make sure it's done to somebody else before, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Now, if I were to go to my team and say, please make sure it's done when it comes to uploading videos on YouTube, I'm expecting him without a process to create and do these 13 steps from memory every single time he does this. Every single time I'm asking him to do an IG swipe up campaign, which is over here, I'm expecting this person without a process to do these seven steps correctly based on our memory, right? Now, as a business owner, we need to understand this one thing, okay? And it's basically this, which is there isn't a single person in your team that would ever wake up in the morning saying, I wonder how I can fuck things up today, <laughs> right? Everybody wants to win. Right? And as the business owner, it is our role to make sure they win. And the responsible version when something goes wrong is to first ask yourself, did you put the process in place to ensure that they win? And if you didn't, then it's on you. Okay? So one of the things that we do all the time is we create checklists to systematize, to build up this structural asset. Um, to make sure that the team wins, okay? So, um, one of the things that we need to understand is the thing that has not changed over the last decade is that relationships equals money, okay? Um, and the old way used to be this. The old way used to be drive traffic to an opt-in page, gather a person's name and email, give them value, give, 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 then sell something, okay? But the new way today is 
understanding that the money is not in the list, but rather the, the money is in the relationship that you have with your audience. Okay? And ultimately, what you want is audiences. Okay? And um, this is literally what enabled me to do affiliate marketing really well. Um, so some of you might know that when Russell launched Expert Secrets, um, I did really well for this launch. And I can tell you like affiliate marketing is not my core business, right? If you follow me on my list, I hardly promote other people's products, okay? But the reason why, like for Expert Secrets, we did over six figures in sales when this book came out um, and is because of audiences. And when they had this, the launch, um, if you are following this launch, how many of you here, um, you're aware of this launch on when it was released, right? Okay, thank you. So when Expert Secrets launched, um, a lot of people, they were surprised. They were like, who is Ping Jun, right? And what did he do to win this contest? Because there are all these luminaries, leaders, and legends in the top 10 uh, JLD, Dan, Henry, Tony Robbins, Julie, Grant Cardone, Jeff Walker, Rachel, Ty, Amy, Porterfield. All, a lot of them have a much bigger reach and a following than me. Um, but the reason why I did it is because of audiences. And if you start right now building up this audience of warm audiences, you will have an edge. So when people ask me, so what did you do for this contest? I read an ad, and my ad is literally what most people would say on the ad. And what I said on the ad was, this is a great book, buy this book, right? I'm not doing anything different in terms of strategy, in terms of the messaging. The only thing that's different was I built up this warm audience over time by focusing on content, okay? That's what it is. Here's what Russell said at the end. I want to make a quick video today to tell you about my friend Ping Jun. Now, Ping, uh, when we launched my book Expert Secrets a little while ago, he came out of nowhere and crushed all the other affiliates. Um, it still blows my mind he was able to sell as many books as he did. Uh, sold a ton of books. Um, we had him come speak at Funnel Hacking Live talking about his um, his content machine, how he does what he does, um, and it's amazing. His presentation, first off, it was so cool to see how he systemizes the entire process, which was awesome. But then second off, he shared a, a really vulnerable video clip, and we had people in our audience crying, and it was just... Uh, his connection was was amazing, um, and uh, yeah, he's he's an amazing person, and really amazing marketer, and amazing uh, at what he does. So if you have a chance to work with Payne Jr. in any uh, if it is with at event, if it is with um, selling books, if with driving traffic, like he's amazing at pretty much all these different skill sets across the board. If you have a chance to work with him, definitely do it. Um, we've been grateful to know him over the last couple of years and have him as a partner. Uh, he's helped grow ClickFunnels and uh, he helped grow your company as well. So what did I do that was different? I focused on building up audiences to get my reach up to convert cold audiences into warm audiences. And if you start doing it now for all these different platforms, I guarantee you three months, six months, a year from now, your entire life will be different, okay? So um, the difference is when you start doing this, okay? You are now building a brand. It also helps your branding and your positioning. This is how your audience now will start seeing you as the expert, as the thought leader, and as the only logical choice, okay? So 20 years ago, if you think about this, this entire process, if you wanted to be number one, what did you have to do back then? You would have to advertise on radio, TV, newspaper, magazines, and like the pinnacle of advertising would be TV, right? If you have deep pockets 20 years ago, you advertise on TV. And you guys know this, but right now, this thing here is the new TV, right? So it used to be the case that you have to get the TV into the houses, then you would have to get onto the channels, and then after that, you have to be on the show that is on a channel. But today, the thing that is all different is that today, this is the new TV, the thing that's in your pockets. Your phone's a new TV, and the apps are the new channels, and ultimately, you just need to decide which show do you wanna be a star in, okay? Where are your audiences already hanging out? Where are the conversations that's already happening? 
For some of you, if it's business to business, it could be LinkedIn. For some of you, if business consumer, it could be Instagram. If it's long form, it could be, if your, your audiences are into long form tactical videos, it could be YouTube. But your audience is hanging out somewhere and the question is just, how can you enter the conversations that is already happening, okay? So if you think about the different channels, okay? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, these are the new TV channels. Okay, so whether it is for Instagram, Instagram is the new reality TV, right? If you are into beauty and lifestyle and fitness, Instagram is great for that, right? If your audiences, um, Facebook is basically the new place people go to to get news. It's the new, it's the new talk show, right? Um, when it comes to podcasting, podcasting is the new radio right? It's a great way to get high-level clients because the people that listen to you on a daily basis, these are the serious people. YouTube, if you feel that your audience is hanging out where they want to watch instructional videos, how-to videos, tactical videos, and they need to watch some sort of screen record, okay? Um, then YouTube is the new sitcom where you can get them to binge watch your series, okay? Um, there are many other channels out there but ultimately, this is the big opportunity right now, is that anyone can build a brand and be a thought leader and be an expert in their market, in their niche. Uh, and this is literally why this is the big opportunity right now. And those who start building up that process um, will win, okay? So ultimately, this is literally what changed my life, uh, content creation, monetizing it through funnels, building systems around it so that I can still travel and have a life. And I know that ultimately, if you did that as well, it will make all of the difference for you.